I'm Lisa McMahon. I'm the author of 24 books, including the Unwanted's Quest series, uh, which will have seven books in all. Uh, it's a sequel series to the Unwanted series. And I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about the Unwanted series. The first book begins in the world of Quill. And in Quill, it's against the law to do anything creative. So if you're a kid and you get caught doing something like singing or dancing or uh, inventing something or even drawing in the dirt with a stick, at the age of 13, you will be considered unwanted and sent to your death. Now, luckily they don't all die because we'd have a really short book. Um, and I'm gonna tell you a little more about what happens in a second, but first I thought I'd set it up for you. The first chapter begins in the land of Quill, and Alex and Aaron Stowe are identical twin brothers. They're 13 years old, and they're standing in the commons of Quill with all of their friends, waiting to find out, are they wanted, are they necessary, or are they unwanted? And the high priest Justine first reads the names of the wanted, and she says Aaron's name in that group. And he breathes a sigh of relief because you just never know in a place like Quill. Um, but he's never been caught doing anything creative. Alex is a different story. When the high priest Justine gets to reading the names of the unwanted, she reads his name. And he's been expecting this. In fact, he's known ever since he was 10 years old that he would be considered unwanted because he's been caught so many times drawing in the dirt with a stick. And so when they call his name, he stands there and waits for the governors to come and shackle his wrists. And then they chain him to the other unwanted. And all of those unwanted board a bus. And the bus takes them to the outskirts of Quill to the death farm. It comes to a stop and the children get off the bus and the gate to the death farm creaks open and they shuffle in and they're met by these enormous hulking eliminators with red beady eyes and black cloaks. And the children don't know what's happening. Um, they're scared, they know this is the end. They can even see the great lake of boiling oil in the distance. And then the gate closes behind them and something else happens. Colors start to swirl around. A lawn springs up with fountains and there's a jungle growing in the distance. That great lake of boiling oil turns into a beautiful green sea. And the gray shack on the property becomes a beautiful mansion. And the kids don't know what's happening. Mr. Today, the person who lives there, who's supposed to be putting them to death, comes out of the mansion. He's wearing this colorful robe. And his white hair is just kind of waving in the breeze. And he says, welcome children. How does it feel to be eliminated? And he goes on to tell them that he's the guy who's supposed to be putting them to death, and uh, he hasn't been doing that at all. Uh, in fact, he's been saving unwanteds for years and keeping them hidden in his magical world called Artemé, and teaching them to use their creative abilities to do magic for fun, but also to protect themselves in case they ever get discovered and have to fight. So that's a little bit about the opening chapters of the first book of the first series, The Unwanted. Um, and a lot of people ask me, Lisa McMahon, why would you write a book about sending children to their deaths? Like, what's wrong with you? I, and I just tell them the truth. It's because of my own children. There they were, back when they were nine and 12. That's Kennedy on the right at age nine and Killian on the left at age 12. And when they were this age, they came home from school one day and they inspired the Unwanted series. Now today they're 26 and 23. So this was quite a while ago, but I remember it very clearly. They had a letter in their backpacks and the letter read, Dear parents, we are so sorry to tell you that we have to eliminate the arts classes from school because of budget cuts. So we can no longer have art or music or theater. And I thought, this is terrible. My kids love those classes. My son loves to draw. My daughter loves to act and sing. And I remember looking at them and saying, wow, kids, I am so sorry. It kind of feels like you're being punished for being creative. 
And then, as it happens with, with writers, we ask a question over and over again. And that question is, what if? What if this happens? What if that happens? This is how we get our ideas. And I remember thinking, what if there really was a world where children were punished for being creative? And I said the idea out loud, and my son Killian said, not just punished, sent to their deaths. And I said, yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't want that to happen in real life. But in a book, I'd love to find out how are these kids going to get out of this situation. And so I began writing that chapter with Alex and Aaron Stowe and their friends Megan and Lonnie and Sam Heed. And it became a magical world. And, um, you know, that's a little bit about how that first uh, book begins. Now, I mentioned to you that my son Killian loves to draw. And when he was 17, the first book was about to come out and he was going into 12th grade. And I said, Killian, will you draw some things for me for, that go along with the book so that when I go to show children in schools around the country, uh, I can show them some pictures of we, what we thought the world looks like. And he said, sure. So he um, began to draw, and this was the first one he did for me. These are those eliminators that meet the unwanted when they're coming in uh, to the gate to the death farm and before the world turns to um, a magical place. By book two, we meet a new character. This is Matilda, and she's a gargoyle who has a telepathic ability with her friend Charlie, so they become spies for our friends, the Unwanteds. Uh, we meet Fox and Kitten, who are sort of a comedic duo, and they show up to go on a journey with Alex and the others in book uh, three, The Island of Fire. And in book four, they meet some people on an island called the Island of Legends, and they meet some creatures. And this is Lhasa. She's one of the creatures on the Island of Legends. And the actual island itself is a legendary creature named Karkanos. Now, Killian kept drawing for me as he got older and went to college in order to become an artist. So as he's going through and as the books are coming out, I'm having him draw. And I think you'll be able to see that he starts to get better and better at his art because he's practicing and because he went on to college to learn how to become a better artist. This is a scene from book five, The Island of Shipwrecks. And that's Alex and Florence, who's the magical warrior trainer. She's the one who teaches all of the unwanted how to use their abilities to fight, to use their magic for fighting. Now this is Captain Baldhead, and he is a bad guy, and he's out poaching sea creatures. And so Alex and our, our unwanted friends are all trying to stop him, but he becomes a big problem toward the end of the series. This is a picture of the seven islands, uh, what the map looks like. Um, and in the seventh book, we meet Pan. She's the ruler of the sea. And Pan has a, one very big secret, and that is that she has been hiding five baby dragons in her island. They're her five babies, and they were born without wings. So she asks our friends, the unwanted, to make magical wings for them so they can escape from that pirate. Uh, and at the end of that series, we find out that they make it safely away and, and they're gone and we assume everything's fine. And 10 years go by before the second series begins and we learn that those dragons were not fine after all. In fact, the first book of the new quest series is called Dragon Captives and we learn that they have been taken captive uh, by the evil Revenir. And so they come back and ask our friends, the Unwanted, for some help. And we have a new set of main characters now, Thisbe and Pfeiffer Stowe, they're 12 years old, they're the most magical people Artemis has ever seen. And they decide that they are the ones who can help these dragons. So they set off on a journey. Now, by this time, Killian has graduated from college, but he's still drawing things for me as a professional artist. And this is a scene from Dragon Ghosts, which is book three, of the Unwanted Quest series. Uh, and the most recent thing Killian did for me is the Simber poster. And Simber's one of the main characters throughout. You might already know who he is. 
Uh, he's a winged cheetah who's a magical statue who can really fly and, and run, and he's very gruff, but he's got a soft heart. So he's one of my favorite characters. Um, do you remember this? Well, four years after Killian drew this, he was in college. He'd been in college for a few years, learning how to be a better artist. And he said, Mom, I want to redo that picture. Is it okay if I do? And I said, sure. Uh, he said, I have a whole new idea of what that scene looks like when those unwanteds are coming in through the gate to the death farm. And so he started drawing. And I'm wondering, do you want to see uh, the new picture four years later? I bet you do. Here it is. So, you can see that Killian's art has improved over time. And, uh, you know, some of you might be wondering, well, what about your daughter? We saw a picture of her early on. You talked about her briefly, about her loving to, be, uh, loving to act. And uh, I just wanted to tell you quickly about her, too. She has become a professional actor. She went to college to be a, a better actor. And now she's 23, and she's been in a couple of TV shows, but most recently she got a most amazing opportunity to be on the CW Network as Nancy Drew. So she is Nancy Drew, that's my daughter Kennedy, who you saw when she was nine years old. Um, and, how, uh, the, and one of the things I wanna tell you about that I feel is so important that we understand is that when things get taken away from us, uh, that doesn't mean it's over. You know, Killian kept working on his own, on his art. Kennedy kept working on her acting. She found some things in the community theater to work on in order to improve herself as an actor. And you can see my son became a professional artist, even though there weren't any art classes at school. And my daughter became a professional actor, even though those were taken away from her. So I just wanna encourage you to know that even when things get taken away from us, we're still gonna be okay. And we can still work on our special thing um, on our own. I wanted to let you know quickly that there is an Unwanted's app and you can get it for your phone. Um, and it's a great place to learn about all the different spells and the different islands and also interact with other people who love the Unwanteds. So um, you can find that by going to unwanteds.app and you can find that there. And I just have one more idea for you. Um, I, one of the best parts of writing this magical world was creating the spells. And I thought, you know, when I gathered my kids together, I said, what are we going to make out of art supplies? I wanted all the magic to be sort of based on art supplies. Um, and what kind of components would you far find in an art classroom? And my daughter immediately said, what if you have a paintbrush that, you know, you could paint yourself invisible? And I said, great, I loved it. And I put it in the story. And then my son said, what if you took a handful of paper clips, you threw them at your enemy and they went soaring out and stuck through their clothing and stuck them to the wall. And I love that too. And I said, that is awesome. So that's how we started to think about some of the different spells that are in these books. And so my challenge to you is, what kind of things do you have around your house that you could use as a magic component and what would it do? So if you ever decide you want to tell me what kind of magic you would create in your own magical world, um, you can find me on social media and I'm on Instagram, Lisa underscore McMahon, uh, as well as Twitter. And I would love to hear from you and hear what kind of magic you would make if you were creating your own spells, just like Alex and his friends. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an awesome day.